I also don't think in a, in, a, in a civil community, it's unreasonable to say, you know, stop making noise at 11 o'clock, but I'm old. You're listening to Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong. Welcome to episode 174 of the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. I'm Dave Roberts. With me, it's my podcast partner in crime, writer, owner of the Georgia Virtue, dog mom, Jessica Salaji. Bonjour. Bonjour. How are you? I'm all right. How are you doing this week? I'm great. That's great. Did you, did you take your federal holiday last Friday? No. I don't, you don't get holidays when you own the company. I've learned that. I mean, I knew that before, but I learned that real quick when in the last six months. I know yeah, you did yeah. though. What'd you, how'd you celebrate? Work. <laughs> no, I don't really have a problem with it being, <clears throat> with it being a holiday. I think it's an interesting story. Uh, I don't, I don't think you sign a law saying this is going to be a federal holiday, the week of the federal holiday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm just not a big, like, I think we should have fewer federal holidays or possibly maybe just shut the federal government down and call it a holiday. Well, whenever they have furloughs and uh, budget problems, they would say non-essential workers won't report. I'm like, well, why the hell does the federal government have non-essential workers? <laughs> it's terrible. But um, no, I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with the holiday. I just, and it, it's. It was the timing, it's the pandering, it's the... it's Virtue signaling. Yeah, it's the fact that somehow something like that has become a partisan issue. Like, I just, I'm over it. I'm just over it. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I don't care yeah. one way or the other about it. Uh, you know, historically, it's interesting. It's a, a fine thing to learn about for, for kids. Not, not they would because they're not in school right now. But I don't care. I just think that's kind of haphazard and shoddy way, way of doing things. Or if you want to shut, if you want to shut the Federal Reserve down, uh, you know, close the Fed for the day, you can do that. But the way you do that is you is going into 2022 as as you begin the the FY 22 in October. That's when you give all your federal institutions and everybody the list of holidays they're going to have, not Tuesday before Friday. Well. Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. But you know what's also interesting is that um, for years, and I think we even mentioned it on the show, but for years we've talked about as a country making Election Day a, a federal holiday and and the importance of it so that, you know, people can vote and they don't have to worry about work. And whether you agree with that or not, I, I was under the impression that, that that was something that had, I mean, that had really had a lot more traction over the last, I would say, it decades than this and and now all of a sudden this is this became a thing so quickly and election day still hangs in the balance well uh yeah i don't really want to see election day be a holiday uh i'd like to see election day and tax day right next to each other well yes of course but wouldn't you agree that if the federal government itself was going to institute another federal holiday it should be something that has to do with the federal government. Yeah, maybe so. And now there's maybe calls. So. Now there's calls for Georgia to either add Juneteenth or eliminate Columbus Day and replace it because you know we we only give state employees a certain number and like and and it's going to be like all the other holidays, MLK and 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 President's Day and how they argue about some school districts. You know, they have the local control to decide whether or not they send kids on the federal holidays or not. And it's just going to be something else. To, I mean, it's June, but it's just going to be another thing to argue about. Right. Well, especially if they if they take Columbus Day. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think fighting about uh, fighting about holidays is stupid. It's like I said, for me, it's, it's the how, not not the what. I just don't care. <clears throat> You know, I would like to know if mail's going to run that day. Actually, mail runs uh, ran on Saturday, so that would be the day that they would they would take the actual day, not the day it was reserved off. But you know, Connie was going to work, and I was like, "What well, is the Fed going to be open?" I don't know. I don't, and I and I haven't read the law. I, 
I don't think there's that much to it. I, and, and maybe he is starting it for for t- FY22. That, that. But, I mean, we don't get enough work out of our fellow employees as it is. Well, but or too point- much in the case of the ATF. Yeah. But and yeah, and the DEA. But the the issue when what you're talking about, even if it doesn't start this year, I think the issue or not issue, but the thing to point out is that they were able to get something done quickly and on a single issue. Ah, bringing it back. Uh huh. And and now we we're still facing things that should have been addressed, should have been repealed, should have been instituted that aren't because told it takes too long to make the sausage or. Whatever. No, I mean, no bill should be more than three pages long. You should be able to read a, a, an entire bill in less than five minutes. Because half, half, half of people don't even know what the hell they're voting for. They're reading a synopsis that somebody else wrote. Or they're taking it, especially in Congress, taking it and splitting it up among uh, uh, staff members. They say, okay, you read this section of the bill, you read this section, you read this, this section, then you, got, you all come and brief me. You know, I hate you know hate to break into their their cocktail party time. So, judge puts Augusta Circuit judicial split on hold for now. You know, we've talked about this. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about it during the legislative session. You know, when the Republicans got all their panties all in a wad when um, Natalie Payne lost the election last November, so they decided that they were going to create a new judicial circuit because a a black Democrat won. And um, I'm not one. I mean, I I don't think I've ever used the race card, but I, it is a factor here. I don't think it's the only factor, but you know, we, we talked about like it, it basically splits the current um, Augusta Judicial Circuit into its own circuit away from Richmond and Burke counties, and takes money and resources and all kinds of things. Well. As soon as Kemp signed it into law, he made some appointments that would be effective, um, I think, January of next year. Obviously, they need a little bit of time to um, get everything in order. But as soon as he signed the bill into law, a couple lawsuits were filed. And this past week, a judge said on one of them, you can't. um, Well, I guess I misspoke. The, it was technically supposed to take effect July 1 so that for the budget years and stuff, they could go ahead and make preparations and, and things. But I don't believe that any judge was going to take the bench until January, if that makes sense. But that's obviously coming up. And the judge said, nope, I'm issuing a 30-day restraining order to prever- preserve, you know, as it is and make sure that there's no harm done to the public. I'm like, wasn't... The time to make sure there was no harm. To, like, where were all? I mean, I know that the people who are suing were being vocal during this, but well, the judge obviously can't can't make a ruling until it it, it becomes comes before him. Well, sure, but I mean, I mean, like the parties involved, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Like, you know, there were there really wasn't that much coverage about it. I mean, if you if you read the local paper in the area, you know. The TV stations did their 30 second blips about the update of the bill's progress. And the Augusta Chronicle wrote some long form pieces that were super informative and had some policy. And I guess, as Casey Cagle would say, some, you know, effing politics stuff behind it, like the, the backroom stuff. But people weren't like the, the judges, the, the attorneys, the people, the power players that they weren't that vocal about it. And and now they want to be super vocal about it, and and I don't really feel I I don't want this to be a thing, so I'm a, I am I'm not letting my pettiness overshadow that, but I lack sympathy, I or empathy, I I don't know, whatever I don't know I don't I don't feel bad for them because they didn't want to be on the wrong side of an issue publicly, so they chose not to say anything when this was being rammed through the legislature in a matter of weeks. Well, as far as not seeing a whole lot of on the about on the news, or uh, certainly uh, not hearing about it in Metro Atlanta, is one. It's it's a complex issue, and people don't have the bandwidth for it. No, it's not sexy at all. Right. I mean, it's it doesn't bleed, so it's not going to lead. Uh, it, the, it could be a horrible piece of legislation. It doesn't matter. It's it's 
it, it, there's there's too much to get your head around. Uh, it says this, the split would also leave uh, three Columbia County judges to work 80% capacity and the, and the five judges in the Augusta circuit to work beyond capacity. Uh, I mean, we knew that. We knew that. And... The reality is that Kemp should have vetoed it, if not for the sole fact that it was happening too fast. Yeah, you know, the, the, the split hadn't uh, considered the impact on the Augusta Judicial uh, Circuit employees, health insurance, retirement, e- ev- all the other ancillary things that go along with running a court. Well, in it, the the budget, the the low end budgets, um, aside from the split, like. You know, it's not like if you have two counties and their budget for the courts, and I'm just using like, this is totally not correct, but I'm just an example. If you have two counties and their budget is a hundred thousand dollars, and you split them apart, it's fifty thousand. That's not how it works because the new circuit has to buy everything from, you know, I mean they had they have real estate, but they have to convert the building. They have to have everything from letterhead and and stamps to furniture inside the buildings and stuff and and like i think the estimate on the low end was a million dollars in the first year so yes they have the money and because it's 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 a wealthier area which is one of the reasons that they want to do this um but you're just because you have the gov the, the money doesn't mean that your local government is prepared to implement I guess the parameters and the the allocate the resources properly to make sure that this gets off the ground. And this is very rushed. Yeah, it it, it feels fast. It feels real fast. We're not talking so about you, r- raising a speed limit on on a road from fifty five to seventy. You're talking about creating something that doesn't exist. Well, and when you talk about health insurance and retirement and stuff, I mean, I don't judicial salaries in the retirement system. I'm not sure how difficult that would be because it's, it's a, I don't know. It would be interesting from the, from the county standpoint, if they're, if they have county retirement programs, but for the judges, like that's just a lateral move because it's a state system, but the, um, the health insurance and stuff, like if you're going to start, if, if the law becomes effective July one, but you don't actually have court taking place until January one of next year, obviously there are things that need to be in place. So people are going to move and the split is effective. There's going to be a delay on justice because the, the old circuit isn't allowed. They're, they're not allowed to handle any of the cases that are going to the new circuit. They said that in the bill. And then when you talk about the employee benefits and the health insurance and stuff like are, is, is, are they just going to leave them? Like there's so much logistically to be, discuss that hasn't been discussed are you going to pay the other counties to allow your employees that aren't employees anymore to stay on your health benefits plan and you'll just reimburse them or like it doesn't make sense to do it like that there was no preparation and we were talking about planning before the show started but um yeah yeah it looked- irrespective of the politics of it they're not prepared to do this right Right. You know, you also have uh, accountability courts that are going are gonna to be split. The, your drug court, your veterans court, your mental health court. All these accountability courts that, in general, we, we, we support. I mean, if somebody has a drug problem, I don't think throwing them in jail is the best thing. And it's a, uh, out here, it's a, it's a, it's a rigorous program to, to make people into, to, to good citizens instead of just throwing them in a cage and, uh, and, and punishing them. <clears throat> well, and part uh, of it being rigorous is that the program is in place with the resources and the people to make sure that it's effective. I mean, and, and you, you go where the people are like, that's one of the great things about the accountability court is do it where you are. Right. So what are these people, I mean, are they, are these people supposed to, can, that are in these courts, are they supposed to stay well, yeah, in a your, circuit? Your mid-program? Yeah. Right. Because look, I think drug court is something like two years. I mean, it's, it's not, you, you don't graduate quickly from this program. I mean, it's, uh, 
very much held accountable. Drug tests, alcohol tests, uh, have to maintain a job, you know. And as they progress through the program, they have, I believe they also have to go into a 12-step program or some sort of treatment. Uh, it's it, it really is a good program. Uh, Judge Dean Bucci runs it in Paulding County and does does a, a fantastic job uh, with it. I, I've, I've been to one of the graduations and I've been to one of the hearings, just kind of observe what was going on. And I, I, I think it, it does it does more good than it does harm, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> so, yeah, th- this is this is not well thought out at all. No, and, and he it, said he said it's a knee jerk reaction to somebody that didn't like getting a. I I don't want to get into why. You know what? It's they did it. Yeah, they they rammed it through, and and the governor signed it. And I and I don't know what the what the judge is is going to be able to do. It, it may go to the Georgia Supreme Court. I well, don't know. here's your. Ah, I mean, only I mean only a couple things can happen. It can, it can be thrown out as uh, as whatever, or it could be it can be postponed and kicked to a higher court, or it can be upheld as a. I mean, it's the law passed legally. Doesn't matter why they did it. Sure, it was. I mean, it, it went through. It went through the the process, and I don't. I don't know if there's anything unconstitutional about it. It's kind of a crappy thing to do, but I don't see anything un, unconstitutional about it. But I don't know. I'm not a constitutional lawyer. No, I'm just a simp, simple air conditioning man. So, not exactly what we had in mind about privatizing the roads. Jessica, this is your headline. Yeah, so last week, the um, Georgia Department of Transportation did their little annual update. And, you know, we, we don't, they're toll roads. I, they call them express lanes, but they're toll roads. And um, it's just, they're toll lanes, excuse me, because not every, you can, not everybody has to pay, but if you're in the lane, you have to pay. But anyway... There's this new plan um, because what is it on there? They want to put new road or new lanes on I-285, which God help us for the construction of that. And then on I-20, I think they're already on 85 and parts of 75, um, but they want to expand where we have them and then add them to new interstates. And so the way that they're selling it to the public is that they're going to um, partner with the private sector, expand their partnership with the private sector. And the private company that wins the bid will be responsible for the maintenance of the road. And their incentive to keep the road in good shape is that they get the money collected from drivers who choose to pay for that lane. Well, you know, a good portion of this came from Nathan Deal being, he was absolutely pissed when the voters did not renew the uh, the Georgia 400 toll. Mm-hmm. He was absolutely furious. And yeah. the whole idea was, it was, was to have a HOV lane. We're going to save the environment. Uh, everybody get together and make group trips and save gas and and everything else, then the, then the government basically just said, ah, screw the environment, just pay us. Mm-hmm. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's, I don't know, this, this skates the line. So I'm, I, you know, I'm all for outsourcing, except when it comes to private probation, private prisons, anything justice system related i'd obviously speed cameras like policing should not be privatized um but but in a sense you know this to me kind of resembles like and and i guess it does resembles is a bad um word but it's along the same lines as like a speed camera or a red light camera from the standpoint that private companies collecting tolls yeah and and like the concept is to pay over time and, and they would get the contract. I think um, it would, they're adding 30, 50, 35, 50, yeah, 35 to 50 years to, to allow them. Well, to. it's 35 years right now. 
Right. And they're going to extend it so that the investment they make, they have time to recover it. Well, you know, there are lots of places that have private roads that are, that are tolls in, in other countries, uh, particularly third world countries where the central government's not, not very strong. So they, there are toll roads that they get put in and they're, they're vastly superior to the government roads. Uh, and it's one of those things that, that, well, as, as the rich American, uh, visiting, you just go ahead and pay. Don't think twice about it. Uh, the I believe the road going from San Jose to Haco in Costa Rica is a, is a private road, <clears throat> and and there have been private toll bridges and and things like that since the Middle Ages. Uh, of course, the idea back then was you're traveling across my land, and I'm, and I'm going to put a I'm going to put a toll on you for for crossing my land. <laughs> well, it's pretty much the same concept now, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I. I don't I, it think would be, it, would, it would be interesting to see if they do if they do it better or if they just become a pseudo governmental agency. Well, see, that's the thing, though. You you exactly where I was going with this. This isn't like this isn't pure privatization or. You know, I'm building a road so someone can cut through the back of my property. This is a partnership. So the state still has control. The state is going to decide who gets the contract. They're going to set the rates. What happens when the company says, um, well, you know, the costs are going up and we need you to raise the rates. And the state's like, OK, sure. But because they're a private contractor, like all the things that go into that are no longer subject to public disclosure because a, it's held by a private company. The same problem we have with private prisons and, and, and things like that. Like there are downfalls to privatization when it's done um, like jointly because the government is involved but we don't get to know the information. That's where I have, I mean, if it was just a private company, like, fine, that's your business. I don't really care. But when you're, when you're in bed with the government, everything you do is our business. Right. And of course the state will be providing heroes, obviously patrolling it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, Cause it's I, only I, part of it. Right. So yeah, the, 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 Making of a of a pseudo governmental agency is is worrisome. I, I don't I don't think that overall the idea of private roads is bad. I just am fairly certain government will mess it up. Public private partnership things really have a track record of faring well for us. Right. Exactly right. So I. I was riding with with Matt Lowe, uh, and the the express lanes were going the other way. But he, he's like, "Man, I I would spend a hundred dollars a mile to get past this traffic." Well, that's funny you say that because you know I used to when I lived in Atlanta and I was in grad school. I lived in Buckhead. I worked in the Marriott Square, and I went to school on Tuesday and Thursday nights in gosh, wherever the Gwinnett campus is for UGA. And I would drive and sit in traffic for like on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, I would sit in traffic for two hours to get to class. And those lanes were there, but out of spite and out of just, I, I never, I refuse. I'd rather sit in, I'm not paying them for a road I already paid for. Yeah. Sort of like the meme that went around. It was like a, it was a, like a no, don't tread on me license plate. It said, imagine being so anti-government that you pay the government extra to be anti-government. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> it's so true. I'm not. I'm not giving you. I'd rather sit here and burn through my gas and be mad as hell when I get to class and tired and not get to eat dinner just so that I don't have to pay you twice. <laughs> For two years, I did that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is extortion. It is it extortion. Is. And hey, you can either sit here with the poor people or hop, <laughs> or hop in the fast lane. Well, also, it was totally impractical when I was going because I obviously had to cut all the way across 285 from Cobb County to get to Gwinnett on the 85 side. So I would be in the far right lane trying to merge onto 85 North. And the far left lane is the, the I mean, the problem was 
not necessarily like 85 North itself, that would at least crawl. It was trying to get on there. So I would be paying like, unless you're going to build something that I can add wings to my car and flutter up over the by the overpass and land in the left lane, you really are of no use to me anyway. All right. So your plan to handle the traffic is the Jetsons. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> because what so, would be better for everyone driving than women with cars that can d- d- fly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing dangerous about that, huh? Go full on Dukes of Hazard off the overpass. It also helps if they don't if they don't uh, store PVC and other flammable things under the overpass. <sighs> so, no, you uh, just blame that on a homeless guy. Yeah. I heard from one of the firefighters that was on the scene that day that it was totally uh, containable, but they were waiting for permission to spray. They had firefighters and equipment on site waiting for an officer to get there, to get, to get permission to spray. And by the time I think that control. would be the, I think that would be one of the times where I just uh, took one for the team and violated protocol. Right. The freaking bridge was ablaze. Yep. But what we did learn from that is how fast things can get done when you remove government. Eh. They got they got all the a lot of the permitting out of the way. They gave per- performance bonuses. That's like performance went up quick. bonuses. You know just as well as I do that they set the bar for something they knew they could beat for those companies. Yeah. They knew they could be done. I don't know what the date was. I mean, because it happened during session, but let's say it was May 1. So they said it at June 1. And then when they got to May 1, they're like, hooray, here's some money. <laughs> Yay, here's some money. Mm-hmm. Georgia U.S. reps Jody Heiss, Andrew Clyde, and Marjorie Taylor Greene told the AJC uh, that they voted against a bill awarding gold medals to police officers who defended the Capitol on January 6 because they disagree with the language of the measure. So I pulled up um, Heiss's statement on this. Uh, and I'm just going to read it because it's I don't know that summarizing it would be a good idea. But it says this is a statement from his congressional office. It says, well, Congressman Heiss voted in support of previous legislation, H.R. 1085, to award congressional gold medals to the three law enforcement officers who died after defending the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. He opposed H.R. Uh, three. 3325 because he is concerned that the bill fails to adequately recognize US police US Capitol Police Officer William Billy Evans. The text of HR 3325 simply adds Officer Evans to language identical to HR 1085 with no meaningful explanation of his death as if he was an afterthought. Officer Evans was killed on April 2nd in the line of duty during an attack by a radical supporter um in the, in the nation of Islam, an incident completely unrelated to the January 6th Capitol riot, and his sacrifices deserve to be recognized in full. Um, And it says that he co-sponsored another resolution that was introduced by um, another congressman to award medals to all four law enforcement officers with more equal consideration. Mr. Heiss is a staunch supporter of law and order and believes all Americans should honor law enforcement officers for standing on the front lines every day on our behalf. Interesting hill to die on there, Jody. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. The PR of of people don't care why you didn't. They just care that you didn't. Right. When has that ever worked? Well, let me tell you why. It might work between you and me. You sit down and talk to somebody. Let me explain, let me explain exactly what happened. This is why I voted the way I did. Like, oh, okay. That's interesting. But on mass, that's, that stuff doesn't get into a mailer. No, and that that statement, I mean, I just read it word for word from his site, and it doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't really resonate with me. Like, what he said doesn't. Right. I didn't find it's, it particularly inf- influential. No, it is, it's one of those things, man. Uh, who cares? Most of the families care, but who, uh, who, who, who cares? Uh, give, them, give, appar- give them their medal. That's what it, uh, if uh, if the the guy who died in April didn't make it on that piece of legislation, drop one of your own recognizing him and, ma- and make them vote against it. 
Well, yeah, and and they you know to say like they didn't adequately mention it. I mean, I think the medal is really the indicator of the recognition, not necessarily the wording in the resolution. Right. I mean, I. I I like, that. I, I, I like the way you put it. It's an interesting hill to die on. It is. And and they weren't the only ones. There were 21 Republicans that voted against it. Um, of course, I don't know. Uh, well, you know Margie. I mean, she's she's all over the place anyway. Well, did you hear what she said? No. I wouldn't call it an insurrection. Marjorie Taylor Greene told reporters, summing up the group's line of thinking, what other qualms do they have? This is not a temple. That is for sure. Talking about the Capitol. Greene groused about the Ville's language that referred to the Capitol as the temple of our American democracy. Um, and I guess Thomas Massey agreed about calling the Capitol a temple, which, I mean, I agree. It's, it's not, not a temple, but like, who cares? Ah, oh, man. She just, I don't know. She'll, she'll probably be a congressman for the next 30 years. Andrew but, Clyde said that the events of January 6th, he compared them to a, quote, normal tourist visit. Huh. Yeah, I've been to the Capitol a few times. No one was ever scaling the walls. And yeah. no one was barricaded in rooms. I mean... Somewhere between, how I also about we did, just say never saw a be- shirtless man wearing a buffalo headdress uh, when mm-hmm. I was at the Capitol. Well, I guess you didn't go at the right day. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know, there's the twenty one. I'll I'll link the twenty one names in the article. Um, again, I just I don't see the point of it. I don't I don't see the benefit. Um, like you said. If, 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 it, if they felt it was insufficient, they could have done something on their own. And, you know, if they truly felt that it was something that was, um, something that needed to be recognized in a big way, then do something as the 21, you know, vote for it and then have some sort of event that you organize your freaking Congress members of Congress <laughs> people. If you host an event, they're going to pay attention. Right. Well, and the thing is, uh, I'd rather them be dickering over whether to give posthumous medals rather than raising my taxes. If this keeps them entertained, like those little plastic keys you give babies, mm-hmm. if this gives them something to, to bicker about up there, fine. I, I, I don't even know how, how Marjorie Green still makes headlines. I mean, good Lord. Just, I, they, they, they could have done an amendment. They could have done their own separate bill for, for the person. Cause if they were two separate incidents. So if you want, if you want to separate them, that's fine. I just, eh, eh, whatever. Is it terrible? I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to die on the hill of defending the bill or, 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 uh, opposing it. It's fine. It's nice. I'm sure all their spouses will, will, uh, uh, will be touched. And have have something to keep on the mantle. So we have a curfew in South Georgia for some. I saw the headline on this story. It's down in um, the city of Adel in southwest, well, south southwest Georgia, and um, they have voted to put a curfew in place on a motorsports park because of the noise. And of course, like. I saw the headline and I'm like, oh, government, you know, and so I click on it and it's like three paragraphs long and it doesn't really give me a lot of information other than it would make it so that they have to stop at 10 p.m. Um, well, they can they can operate the raceway from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and on Friday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. And if they if the park um, fails to abide by it, they can be fined up to a thousand dollars for each offense and then ultimately have or be suspended from um having races at all so that of course is not sufficient for me so i went to the city of adel's website and um the mayor read the mayor's comments and 
read all the meeting minutes dating back to October 2020 because I wanted to see like who who complained, how often did they complain, and what what prompted this. And what I found was super interesting is that the county, it's Cook County where Adele is, and Cook County was that's where the racetrack was. They instituted a curfew and they were almost in danger of being shut down completely entirely permanently because of their vi- their routine violations so the city annexed them like not long before this they were going to be shut down took them over and now they're doing the same thing and they're creating an ordinance that targets i mean in their meeting minutes the city attorney is like well can't you can address noise generally, but you can't draft an ordinance and pass an ordinance that is for a, against a specific business. And one of the council members, of course, was like, well, I want to. And the attorney's like, well, you can't legally do that. And the councilman was like, yeah, but we got a problem. I'm paraphrasing here, of course. But so this next month, the city attorney comes back with a proposed ordinance that targets just the racetrack um, for noise control. So, ah, uh, man, I... I think the the eight to eleven is fine. That's that's early in the morning to yeah. to to list to listen to stuff and and to late at night. I mean, reasonable people go uh, go to be, at least wind down around that time. Uh, how know, long has this has this uh, racetrack been there? Um, years and years and years. Um, that's well, always my th- thing with it is. People move next door to a racetrack and then complain about the noise. Mm-hmm. And I don't know happened- what the I don't know what the residents did, but I do think it's interesting that the city took. I mean, it, you can't say that the city didn't know when they annexed it in that there were noise problems and that the county had a, a noise a noise ordinance in place specifically not for just this raceway, but for certain types of motor related events. I guess. Yeah, um, uh, concert venues. Uh. If you live next door to to an amphitheater, you really don't want to listen to listen to it past eleven o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. But like in Paulding County, there was a there was a uh, drag strip here. People moved to the county and then started complaining about it. Sure, I don't really I don't sympathize with that. And my problem with noise ordinances in general is they assume that everyone. Goes, gets up at 6 a.m., goes to work a 9 to 5, comes home, wants to relax, and is in bed by 10 p.m. Yeah, but what's... I mean, for, what's hold the, on. The the park is... It has some... On one side of it, there is residential stuff, but on the other side is industrial stuff. Like, it is zoned in an industrial area, which is why the county had so many problems trying to regulate it initially, because they couldn't regulate... You know, a manufacturing plant, you can't tell them they've got to shut down at 10 p.m. <laughs> Be a horrible idea. I mean, the, I'm sure they the try its government. Anne- but. Yeah, the city annexed them because they wanted the money. Absolutely. And and that's uh, that's evident by saying that the ordinance, no matter how, what, how they pass the ordinance, is not going to affect their occupational license for the racetrack. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that you kept that at the forefront. Yeah, they 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 want the money. They they want that that sweet sweet tax income that comes with every bag of peanuts, every coke that's bought in that place. Yeah, and I. Uh, they in, and, the, in the city knew knew what the hell they were getting. Well, and I they read knew they from were the raceway. The minutes too, and I will you know give props where props are due. The the clerk did a nice job, and I think probably because it's a super controversial issue. Like instead of just writing. You know, they voted five to two or whatever it was. They um, she's written out like paragraphs and paragraphs about the discussion. So it was really easy to follow. Um, But one of the issues that I have with what they're trying to do is that they're by targeting the race track itself and not like the, the activity They're They're targeting the property owner. And so I guess there's a campground there. Um, cause this was mentioned that if people are on the property after the 11 o'clock, you know, closing time, um, they, they can camp there. They have, they bring RVs, campers, tents, all kinds of stuff. And if they're making noise and revving engines and screwing around, 
the property owner gets fined. Well, at, at some point, I understand that, you know, it's kind of like when the grass gets too high and you have a tenant living there and you're the property owner. I get that. But from a 11 to 1130 type standard, I mean, you're suggesting that somebody, that the company should hire somebody to be on site for campers to keep them quiet or throw them out as if that's even plausible if people have been drinking. I mean, there's just so many things that go into this that I don't see. I don't know. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. And I've never believed that people have the right to, to peace, to quiet, to, to peace and quiet. I just don't think you have that. No. No, it's not specifically enumerated, but it's, I also don't think in a, in a, in a civil community, it's unreasonable to say, you know, stop making noise at 11 o'clock, but I'm old. You know, it doesn't bother me. You know, I, you know, I, I stay up till 2.30, 2.30 in the morning and stuff. Uh, so it, it doesn't bother me, but I, I know, you know, I don't know, man. It's just, they okay. they knew what they were getting. The, the racetrack probably outdates most of the residents in the area. You say it's been there for years and years and years. And I've, I've been to Adele. I'm not sure years and years. Like, I'm not sure generations of, but it's been there a while. Well, I didn't think the first drag race was two horses. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear. But, but here's another thing, though. I've probably been to... Mm, let I don't let's underestimate probably 250 local government meetings in the last several years. Not once have I ever seen someone who works a night shift or a person in, as a who's a first responder who works the night shift. I've never seen somebody at a council meeting or a county commission meeting complaining about the noise that everyone else makes during the day. That's probably true. But if you work, if you work midnights, you understand you're the oddity. The rest no. of the world is, do, is doing its stuff. <clears throat> the rest of the world. Okay. You're also, I just, what I was explaining before, like they have manufacturers, there's a heavy industrial area with plants and all kinds of things. Our, we have distribution centers here and granted they're in an industrial area too, but they work all night long and they are, they're major employers. The UPS people, the FedEx, the distribution facilities, those people work at night. Hospital workers, it's not, I'm not, I understand it's not 70% of the population, but it's also not two. Well, I understand that. You know, as I grew up with a father who worked midnights, working for Delta. You know, basically he and my mother would, would, would uh, t- uh, pass the baton as he was coming home and she was going to work. But I, I, I understand working third shift, working midnights. Uh, it's one of the arguments that I ha- have against blue laws is... When they say we're going to cut off alcohol sales at midnight or whatever, I'm like, well, that's five o'clock to somebody. Somebody's second shift heading home and going to have a beer and and watch TV and relax. And you're saying that that's that's not acceptable. You know, that's when I was sitting in a meeting with uh, uh, with Howard Maxwell. I don't know why you need to be buy a beer at nine o'clock in the morning. I says, well, some people work overnights, Howard. So I didn't think about that. This is a good time to remind you that these are our opinions and not of those of anyone not on the show or any respective company for which we may work, own, or otherwise associate ourselves with on a regular or irregular basis. Georgia mother of five charged with reckless conduct after son, four years old, wanders over to neighbor's house uh, to uh, to play with a friend. Uh, After 10 to 15 minutes, the sister who was in charge realized her brother was, was missing and located him in the neighborhood but the neighbor took the boys inside and called 911. He sure did. Karen. Karen called the cops. And so um, a Union County deputy met, I think her name's, her last name is Henderson, Miss Henderson, at her doorstep um, when she got home from work, took down her information. The mother explained, you know, my 14-year-old was watching her, or our son, the son and another child, um, this is what happened. They said, okay, thanks. And then they came back a week later, charged her with reckless conduct, took her to jail, booked her, fingerprinted her, and DFAX is involved. Yeah, that that's, sounds like it's going to work out great. 
Uh, I remember running the neighborhood at five years old. I had my limits. Uh, a lot to go from from uh, this house to this house, get a little older from this street to this street. And, and I know the world has changed in the <laughs> getting close to be half century that, that I've been around. But I, I rode my bike to elementary school, just a bunch of other kids. We obeyed the crossing guards. It, it, the 14 year old was in charge, which is totally legal, by the way. It is legal. And it's it's understood. I mean, gosh, I I my mom would be across the street in in our house, but I was babysitting at nine, ten years old. Like I don't know why anybody trusted me and, and actually gave me money to do it because I'm not sure I would do the same. I wouldn't even trust a nine year old with my dogs. But um, I think you underestimate the need for parents to get the hell away from their children. She was at work. Yeah. You know, it's not like she was at a bar. Right. Not that it would have made a difference because the law is the law. And the law says that, um, what is it, 13 or older can look after siblings for up to 12 hours or state guidelines, excuse me. But those are the Georgia Department of Human Service state guidelines that they've used for years and, and how they determine whether or not defects should be involved and in, in all the other. Yeah, look, I, that's how I was raised. My my brother was 10 years my senior. My sister uh, is about 11 and a half years my senior. and. They watched us all the time and with a pool out back and, and, and everything else that they were, they were around as, as secondary guardians when my parents were doing anything, whether it was just going next door to, to play bridge or if they had to go to work or anything else. All right, Lee, my sister, you're, you're in charge. And that's just what that generations have been raised like well not only that but um i had friends who wandered off i wandered off um i mean i i got in trouble when i wandered off i call i went across the street to the neighbors my dad was cutting the grass my mom was playing tennis at the tennis courts and uh i I left i tried to tell my dad but he wasn't paying attention because he was on the mower so i called when i got to the neighbor's house which was across the street i called and left a voicemail on the home phone answering machine and he didn't check it and they thought I was like stolen or something. I'm not sure, but um, they did you back. What? They Yeah. My dad was never, he always told me that they'd bring me right back. But, um, but no, I mean, if, if we charged parents with reckless conduct every time and, and how long is too long that, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Well, you think about a 14 year old, the fact that she was watching other kids, the fact that, 14 year olds are sometimes self-interested that she could have been in the shower. She could have been doing something. She could have just been on her phone and not paying attention. But how long is too long before when a child wanders off that it's worth calling the cops and, and charging the mother? We left my younger brother at a truck stop. Nice. It was two families together. So we had uh, <laughs> a truck stop. That's terrible. Well, yeah. And uh, so I can't remember where we were, California, Arizona or something. We were visiting, visiting some, some family friends and we had, uh, the two of us, uh, their two kids and probably my older brother or, uh, and, or my, my sister. So, you know, just a car load of kids. And when they got back to him, he's standing there and, uh, they say, well, say, Chris, son, what were you thinking? He was, I just was thinking about all the times you said you'd never leave me. That's terrible. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it, anybody who hasn't had a, a, a OSM, an O <laughs> moment, when, uh, when being around kids, like, where did that one go? I mean, Chris has got twin boys. You know, they're eight now, so they don't have to be tracked. But they, when they were little, they never went the same direction. One was going left, one was going right. So it was a, uh, it, you had to wrangle them. And you could very easily just turn around to, to get one of them, uh, 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 you know, a, a cup of milk and, and turn around and where's your brother? I, I just well, don't, I, I, in- I, I don't, I, it's one thing that I don't understand calling the police. I don't understand being that horrible neighbor. 
Um, oh, she couldn't have well, gone I'd next be door. I'd rolling her house for sure. Yeah, but she could have gone next door and when when Miss Henderson was home and said, "How can I help you?" Exactly. How 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 can I be a good neighbor? This is this is what happened. I know he was only coming over to play with our kid. Uh, I, I know your your daughter's in charge. Your son, I think it was a daughter, is in charge, and it's, it's you know watching four siblings is a is a heck of a responsibility. Of course, that happens in the low household all the time. Uh, Could something I mean, bad have happened? Yes. But it didn't. And there, it, it didn't. And it, these things happen. They do. And, and, and bad things happen. I mean, hell, a, a coyote could have come out and grabbed him. Anything could happen. But the fact is, the, the kid was obviously being safe. He was going somewhere he'd probably been a hundred times. Going to see his friend. And it could have been a very similar situation where you know, he thought that he told his sister, I'm going to go next door, and she wasn't paying attention or she was taking mm-hmm. care of one of the other kids. I just, I think it's a, uh, if you, why even have the guidelines if you're not, if you're not going to stick by them? I mean, I, I, I don't know what this, what this mother did that, that justifies being arrested. Well, and, um, so David DeLugas, he, I, He's from like the Roswell Red area, and and I I know him through the political realm, I guess. But um, he's he owns or not owns. He started Parents USA, and he's it's like a advocacy group for shocking parents. Um, and he's representing her pro bono. Um, and it it sounds like the law is on her side. Like in the article that I read, there was a reference to a 1997 case that said um, the. Like, I guess the majority in their opinion said that reckless conduct statute is susceptible to arbitrary enforcement, concluding that the state failed to contend that the reckless conduct statute is violated by the many parents who on a daily basis, often due to necessity, leave an older child to care for their younger siblings while the parents work or attend to do other business. And has the the world changed a lot since 1997? Absolutely. I mean, I was nine. Um, babysitting, but uh, it's not so different that parents don't have an, a need to leave other children with their other and, children. And she hasn't worked. She well, hasn't since since this happened since she was arrested. And that's kind of we what ha- I was getting at too with with it. The law might be on her side, but the damage is done. Yeah, it could financially break her. the The law the law may be on your side, but it, it could cost you everything you had to defend yourself. And she wasn't going to work, leaving fourteen year old in charge because because she's independently wealthy. You know, it, as instead of sitting around on welfare or anything else, she she was out there going to a job. Uh, man, I just, I, 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 they say this is not the first time this kid's wandered over there. It's the second. S- second, fine. In a year, in, in a two year period or something, a year earlier. Yeah. And it's, oh God, the 13 or 14 year old in any other time in human history would have kids of her own. Yikes. Just good Lord, man. But no. again, this wrong on the neighbor, wrong on the deputy, wrong on the deputy who went back and, and you know, wrong on all of them. Brought just, what she described as a fleet of vehicles to come arrest her. Mm-hmm. Which honestly, if it's I more mean, than one, it's totally inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't a violent offender. Oh, and my question is who stayed with the kids while she had to go get booked? Right. That that was... Is DFAX going to sit there? You're going to leave the 14 year old in charge? That's more dangerous than the 14 oh. <laughs> year old. Yeah. Man, I, I, it's just stupid. Just stupid to use the law like that. I, I don't know who got a burr under his saddle with this one and decided to bring the, the, the full force of local government on this, this, this woman with five kids she's trying to support. 
who thought that was appropriate. Obviously, the the local DA does, because it's not like he, he disavowed the warrant or whatever the, the verbiage is for when the DA doesn't sign off on it. Isn't that um, David Ralston's sister? Of I don't know. I think it is, uh, which means that he can just drag it out if, he, if she wants to. It's a shame that she picked, you know, trying to handle this thing instead of... Well, Ralston's not doing anything pro bono. even serve the people pro bono i mean his first question to her would 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 be who'd you vote for and what are your politics i did not worried about principle i mean if if you don't vote the way he wants you to he he will ruin your life on the on the floor of the house what 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 uh what hope does a regular citizen have if she can afford the 10 grand to retain him all her kids will be out of college before she ever goes to court So, Jessica, do you have any closing thoughts as as our our clock is winding down? Yeah, so I heard an interesting word this week um, that's a synonym synonym for uh, jail. Huscao. It's English, but it comes from, like, Spanish derivatives or whatever. But I'm going to refer to jail now as Huscao. You're going to Huscao. You've never heard of being locked in the Huscao? No! (laughs) <laughs> whatever if you knew it's, a, it's a it's a it's an old-timey word yeah well that's what explains why you know it doesn't it? it exactly i mean that's something you'd you'd see on bonanza or andy griffith or something like that being referred to the who's uh if you like what you heard please like and share us on social media interact with us when we are wrong uh if you are criticizing jessica please limit it to how many complaints a week <laughs> Is it, is, it, is, it one, is it one per episode for you? Well, sure, I'll give people one, but I, I haven't been wrong, so it doesn't, you know. <laughs> so for Eric Cumbie, our editor, for Jessica Salagi, I'm Dave Roberts. Have a great week. 